Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at some available placeholders in Webpack. So what do I actually mean by that? Well, you see that right here, we are hard coding this as a single file name. But eventually what might happen later on is that, uh, for example, we have, for example, a multiple source entry file, or maybe we are building a lot of files and then echoing out them all at once. So we need some sort of distinction here we cannot really just go ahead and build our whole project into a single JavaScript file. For example, take example of Facebook. When you open facebook.com in your browsers, it's not that Facebook just fetches all the JavaScript it needs to your browser. It just loads only the JavaScript responsible for loading home page. So what we could do in this case is, just like I said, you can pass an object in here. What happens now, is that instead of you know defining build.js as its name what we could do is we could pretty much just go ahead and say my file is this right now this is basically just like what we did with string so this thing and this thing is similar for now right so what's the difference now the thing is we now have access to something known as a placeholder and in webpack we have the following available placeholders we have a hash placeholder we have a chunk chunk hash placeholder we have a name placeholder we have an id placeholder we have a query placeholder we have a content hash placeholder so what do i mean by all of these you can think of these as the variables webpack offer you for the file names right so what i can do is go ahead and replace this name with something like name.build.js right so now if i just go ahead and fire off my build folder here and if i run npm run build and actually let me just go ahead and modify my package so json here to say that rmrf build folder and i want web pack so that we don't have to like do it all the time so now we could just go ahead and run build again so what it's going to do is run webpack command and create a new build folder which would contain you can see my file dot build dot js so you see that this name right here is replaced with this my file how about if i go ahead and include a content hash here so if i go ahead and say this is my content hash and run it it fire off the build folder creates a file called my file dot some sort of hash you could see in the name dot js now this content hash basically means that it would hash the contents of your file and it, it's going to include that in the name why this is useful in case of cache busting think about you are running a production you are running a website a project on production and you change a critical javascript file for your clients now browsers usually cache the files for quicker access but you really want this file to be you know propagated to the existing users as well in that case what you could do is instead of creating files just on the basis of their name you can create files on the basis of their content hashes as well so if you change the contents of some sort of javascript file its hash would change if its hash would change then the name of that file would change and if the name of that file changes then browser is forced to download that again because browser does not really know that it corresponds to a previous file it already has in cache right so if it kind of confuses you don't worry you can think of like it's just a fancy way of uh, naming a file you can think it think of it like this for now we could just omit this uh, content hash these other hashes also means not really the same thing but more or less they are just a type of hashes you can create within webpack right so yeah that is pretty much how you're gonna uh, make use of these placeholders and that's all for this video we are going to come back to these placeholder usages once we start creating some sort of production apps with webpack so that's all for this one i'll see you then in the next video